Good morning, I'm Diane Macedo. Thanks for streaming with us. In today's update, we're following the latest on a deadly partial building collapse near Miami Beach. At least one person was killed and officials say the death toll is expected to rise as search and rescue operations continue. First responders rescued 35 people from the part of the 12-story condo that remained standing and pulled two survivors from the rubble, but the number of people missing is still unknown. Officials have set up a family reunification center nearby and are asking for those looking for loved ones to call 305-614-1819 for information. We're also learning the White House is monitoring the situation and is in touch with local officials to provide any needed assistance along with FEMA. ABC's Victor Okendo has the latest on the search for survivors. This is going to be an entire building. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 to 13 stories. Overnight, survivors pulled from the rubble after a deadly building collapse in Surfside, Florida. I have never seen so many ambulances and police in my life all at once. The entire building is completely gone in the back towards the beach side. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue saying more than 80 rescue units responding, working to rescue people trapped in the 12-story building. At least one person is dead. The building shook. And then I looked out the window and then you couldn't see. I thought it was like a storm or something coming in. And then what happened was when the dust cleared, the back half of the building or back two thirds of the building was gone. And this morning, officials saying that the rescue efforts are ongoing. Currently, the search and rescue operations are continuing uh, based on the intel that we have. The mayor of Surfside on scene this morning saying 15 family units were evacuated. 10 people were treated on the scene. He fears the death toll could rise. I think the building was substantially fall. No reason for it not to be. And the real heartbreak for me is that, you know, we had the dogs out there this morning looking for people, trying to find people in the rubble, but uh, we, we, we just didn't get any hits. Uh, Victor has been on the scene there in Surfside, Florida all morning. He's live with us on the phone now. Victor, what's the latest there? Yeah, Diane, we actually had to switch locations uh, from where we initially were uh, for a few reasons. And there's actually a pretty bad storm rolling through Surfside right now as well. You can only imagine how that's going to complicate the really intense search and rescue operations happening here. So half of this building collapsed in the middle of the night just before 2 a.m., approximately 55 units just gone. The way the mayor of Surfside described it was that they just pancaked. We know at least one person is dead. At least 10 were treated on the scene. They were able to pull some 35 people from the structure, two from the rubble. We're waiting on word to find out just how many might still be trapped in that rubble, Diane. And Victor, what do we know about the building itself? Uh, I know they're still trying to figure out how many people um, are trapped. Do they know how many people were inside to begin with? Not yet. We haven't gotten that number, but the mayor of Surfside did say that there's really no reason to believe that the building wouldn't be full at that time. So he is incredibly concerned. He just thinks that the death hole is going to rise. Um, we also just heard from Governor Ron DeSantis not too long ago. He said that it's a really, really tragic situation, that he's hoping for the best in terms of additional recoveries. But we are bracing for some bad news, just given the destruction that we're seeing. Diane? Well, we know the building manager said they, they believe the building was reasonably full and the mayor of Miami-Dade County said there are 130 units roughly in the building and that half of them uh, collapsed. So we're going to be watching that closely. Uh, Victor, any idea about what caused this yet? Not yet. One of the first things that we've heard uh, from witnesses and people who own condos in that building was that it had gone under uh, some construction and that there was some pretty heavy machinery brought in that was at one point on the roof of the building. I asked the mayor of Surfside about that and he was like, yeah, but we have buildings in this area under construction all the time. There's you can't think of a reason why this would have happened. The building itself, it's a little bit older. It was built in 1981. Um, but you see that a lot here in Surfside. It, it's an older population. It is home to a lot of older buildings. It's just north of Miami Beach for people who are looking for a, a quieter way of life with go on the beach. And, and I know that you mentioned there are fears of a secondary collapse. What have officials said about the stability of, of the rest of the building, the part of the building that's still standing at this point? I mean, we were being kept a distance away because it still could entirely come down. Yet firefighters are in there doing their job going through this. We've seen them, uh, you know, get close and 
use those ladders to pull people from balconies. We've also seen them just go door to door. An incredible uh, response here. It's Miami-Dade Fire Rescue leading the way, but they're getting assistance from, I mean, I, every single agency within the area has showed up for this one. I've never seen a response like this. You've got people saying that it reminds them of 9-11. Yeah, those firefighters putting their lives on the line right now, no doubt. And so many people crossing fingers and sending prayers for their safety during this rescue and for the safety of those people still inside. Victor Okendo in Surfside, Florida. Thank you, Victor. You got it. And I want to bring in Nicholas Balboa, who actually witnessed the collapse. He says he was walking his dog near his home in Surfside when he felt the ground start to shake. Uh, Nicholas, thank you for joining us. I'm sorry. Uh, for what you had to witness today and obviously what happened there in Surfside. But tell us a little bit about when you first started to notice that something was wrong. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm visiting uh, from, from Phoenix and uh, I happened to be, you know, walking uh, my dog who I brought along. Um, you know, storms are, are relatively common here. We don't get so many storms in the desert. So I thought initially the, the, the thunder or the, you know, the, the sound that I heard at first was, was possibly a storm rolling in. Um, you know, I felt the ground shake. Maybe it was just, you know, one of those, those storms that just is super powerful. Um, but it wasn't about until, uh, about 30 seconds to a minute later, um, it happened again. Um, and so that clearly that that just signaled to me that like that something wasn't right, especially the the feeling in the ground was so much significantly like, you know, stronger because um, the rest of the building fell away. So I, I brought my my dog back upstairs, um, went back down and I could see the, the the plume of dust and debris that was, you know, rolling out, um, you know, through the corridor of the buildings. Um, so, you know, I, I rushed down the street, um, as you know, fire and emergency crews were, were coming to the scene, um, to, to see if I could get a, uh, a vantage point. Um, so they, they were moving people back. Um, but it was at that point, um, I decided to, to go around the, the back of the building, um, of one of the apart, uh, apartment complexes north of that building, um, and walk along the beach, uh, to see if I could get a better view. Um, so I, I was able to, to see. Um, much better. Uh, I could see exactly what happened. Um, there wasn't anybody back there as far as police or fire presence. Um, there were some onlookers, uh, you know, that were standing back there, but, um, myself and another guy, we, we decided to, to get a little bit of a closer look. Um, you know, as we, we got closer to the building, um, we could hear somebody screaming, um, and yelling and making noise. Uh, so we, we got closer, um, and I could make out the, you know, the, the voice, uh, sounded like a young boy. Um, you know, he was you know screaming and he was sticking his hand up through the rubble. Um, you know, so we were able to see him. Uh, so, you know, we started to, to try and, you know, get access to him, uh, to see if we can maybe help him because there, there was nobody back there. Um, so we weren't able to do it. Um, <laughs> unfortunately I was in, I was in sandals at the time. So trying to climb that in my sandals was, was difficult, but you know, he was just saying, please don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. And so, you know, I told him, you know, we're right here. We won't leave you. Um, that's when I tried to signal a police officer and fire, uh, you know, fighters to, to get over there. Um, so a, uh, a police officer, you know, came over and he, he made the climb. He was able to, to get a, you know, a um, he was able to see him. Um, you know, he, he said that, you know, the boy said he was 10 years old and that he was buried under there and he was with his mother, um, you know, who apparently, uh, you know, was 53. So, um, I, I wasn't able to hear her. I wasn't able to see her. Um, unlike I you know, was able to see him. Uh, but you know, I, I, I hope that, you know, and pray that she's okay. Um, and that, you know, she, she isn't one of the, the fatalities in the situation. So my, my prayers and my heart goes out to him. And Nicholas, we've seen a video surface now of a young boy being rescued from the rubble. Is that the same boy that you found last night? It is. Yes, it is. How did you feel when you finally saw him pulled from the rubble and you saw that he at least apparently is going to be OK? I mean, completely like just guardian angel. I mean, given the circumstances and the destruction and where he was, um, he came out unscathed. So uh, he was very, very lucky. And I, I hope that that luck, you know, passes on to his mother um, because I couldn't imagine, you know, what he's going to go through um, in this experience. Yeah, our hearts are going out to so many people 
in that building and so many people outside we did speak to another man who had three uh, family friends inside the building and hasn't heard anything from them he doesn't know if they're okay he doesn't know if they're gone so it's a big waiting game for a lot of people and i wonder nicholas as you talk to people in the community uh, you said there were several people out there kind of watching this happen how's everybody reacting i mean kind of the way that you would think you know anybody would react they're horrified um shocked um angry that this happened that you know something like this shouldn't happen these these buildings are meant to to stand up to hurricanes and storms and such you know they're made out of concrete they they shouldn't just fall apart and especially you know it wasn't just little i mean the entire back side of the building you know fell so clearly you know something something was wrong it's just it's horrifying you know um i know people want to do more people are asking you know what can i do what can i do and you know uh, I, I commend them. You know, I, I wish that, you know, the police and fire crews would, would let us help more. Um, but I understand, you know, that it, it becomes a liability and a risk. Um, and that's, that's their job. But, you know, we just, we have to trust them to, to do their job and to get to these people. Yeah, they're, they're concerned right now about a secondary collapse, saying the part of the building that's still standing is unstable. So understandably, they're keeping you and other onlookers out for your own safety. But I'm sure that little boy and so many others are so grateful for the fact that you were there at that moment to be able to call attention to the fact that he was OK and get rescuers there to pull him out mm -hmm. safely. Nicholas Balboa, we appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you so much for telling us your story. Thank you for your time. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.